I'm gonna give you guys the perfect two year action plan for your metabolic mental illness recovery journey. So this stuff can all be kind of complicated when you're starting. And this is a permutation of the exact plan that I used to heal my bipolar disorder, where I went from having multiple trips to the psych ward, four trips to the psych ward when I was a teenager with complete debilitating psychosis to now where I'm healthy and I have a stable mood. And this is a, a version of the exact plan that I used. So this is the two year plan. This is should help you guys get started if you don't know exactly where to start or there's a, a lot of things flying around. You want to do metabolic therapies for your mental, mental illness, but you don't know where to begin. You don't really know what to tackle first. So hopefully this plan that I'm going to lay out for you guys should clarify a lot of that and should give you some sort of basic framework to start to tackle your mental illness with metabolic therapies. Or if you're just not feeling your best, you have depression, you have anxiety, you know, you don't feel well, you don't feel like your brain is working properly, then this framework will really help set the direction and where you want to go. And one disclaimer is that this is just one version of how to do this. So there are many different ways to go about implementing metabolic therapies for mental illness. A lot of people start a ketogenic diet and then they're gung-ho and have a lot of discipline and are able to really handle the sleep protocol, the physical exercise, um, the drug, alcohol, nicotine, abstinence, the stress reduction, all of that good stuff. So a lot of people can do that all at once. But for many of us, and this is how I did my own metabolic mental illness recovery, I did it in steps. So I would tackle one thing first, for example, ketogenic diet. I would tackle that one thing first, and I would spend a lot of time just on the ketogenic diet trying to figure out, okay, I'm I'm doing this ketogenic diet. How do I do this? How do I track my ketones properly? Spend some time to get that really dialed in. And then once I've done that, then at that point I can go and I can transition to tackle another metabolic therapy. So that's the, the way and the framework that I would recommend for most people who are starting out is to just tackle one metabolic therapy at a time. Learn that metabolic therapy very well. Figure out what works for you. Figure out what doesn't work for you figure out how to develop the discipline to adhere to that metabolic therapy and spend a lot of time just going deep with that one therapy. And then once you've done that, once you figure it out, figured out how to do that therapy and how it works for you, then and you feel like you're dialed in and you've been doing it for a period of time. So you've been doing it for a few months. You really know how to do it. It's becoming second nature. Then you can begin to tackle other metabolic therapies. Right, so for a lot of people, a lot of people can do it all at once, but for many of us, we just need to take it one step at a time. So hopefully this video will give you a general framework of how to do that and a general idea of, you know, if you want to do things one at a time, what is the order of operations? How do you go about doing that? And what should you tackle first? Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so phase one, you guys, I'm calling this phase one, the first six months of your metabolic health recovery from mental illness. So what do you do during those first six months? So what I would suggest is for those first six months, really focus on your ketogenic diet. Get that ketogenic diet super locked in where you learn all the basics. You learn how to eat. You learn what you need to eat, learn how to track your ketones, etc. And, you know, for a lot of people learning how to do a ketogenic diet for mental illness in and of itself is its own journey just right there. And there are a lot of things to think about. So what fat to protein ratio is right for you? Some people can eat one and a half grams of fat per gram of protein and achieve good levels of ketosis. Some people need to eat more fat per protein. Some people need to eat 2.5 or even three grams of fat per gram of protein, which would be probably, you know, 85% calories from fat at that point to achieve the levels of ketosis that they want. So if you're looking to get into a ketone range that can help you recover from serious mental illness, so for a lot of people that's two millimoles or up, 2.5 millimoles or greater, it's going to take some experimentation to learn how to eat, what the proper fat to protein ratio is, how to watch your food conscientiously, consciously so you don't eat too many carbs right because if you eat too many carbs that's the main thing that will kick you out of ketosis so there's a, a journey in learning 
how to eat, learning which foods have carbs in them, learning how to calculate net carbs from food, which is by subtracting the fiber from the total carbs, and just learning how to adhere to the diet and travel on the diet and many, many different things. So for those first six months, I would recommend really get your ketogenic diet dialed in. And for, for some people, they do carnivore, they do well with that. So if you're having trouble, maybe experimenting with carnivore, which is a meat only diet could absolutely be something to consider. And many people do need that. I find I do fine just on a ketogenic diet. It's allowed me to recover. Some people do better on carnivore. So we don't know a lot about this and it's about experimenting yourself, trying to figure out what works, what works for you. And so for those first six months, get the, the blood prick and track your ketones, you know, twice a day, if you can. Watch your ketone levels, make sure they're staying in that optimal range. Figure out what range works for you, like which range do you feel best in? For some people, one to two moles per millimoles per liter is okay. For me, I'm in the 1.2 to 2.5 range, I feel pretty good. Some people need to be 2.5 or three millimoles per liter or higher to achieve the recovery they want. So this first six months is all about getting your ketogenic diet dialed in, locked in. Learn how to do it, learn how to track your ketones, learn what foods you can eat, learn how to go out to restaurants to eat, to order lettuce wrap burgers, omelets, things like that. And then hopefully by the end of this first six months, you really understand how to do the ketogenic diet. You understand how to do it in your own life. And we can move on to the next step because you've developed that habit already. So the next phase of your journey is from the six month mark to the 12 month mark. So this is after you've done a ketogenic diet, you're six months in, you know how to do keto. What are you gonna tackle next? So the next thing I would tackle you guys at that six month mark is movement, exercise, and sleep hygiene. For some people, they can do all three of those at once at the beginning. For a lot of people, that's a lot to handle and a lot to think about. So that six month mark, you know how to do keto. Your keto diet is locked in. You know what you're doing. At that point, it's time to turn your attention to sleep and physical exercise. And there's a lot more that goes into sleep hygiene and physical exercise than just getting eight hours of sleep or getting nine hours of sleep and moving your body. Moving your body is a great place to start. But for sleep hygiene, there's a lot of steps that I do to optimize my own sleep. And I have a whole video, you know, devoted to just sleep hygiene. So I'll link that in the description, something you guys, if you really want an exhaustive list of protocols you can implement for your sleep. But I mean, it's really the basics, right? Having a consistent sleep schedule. So ideally you would go to bed at the same time and you would wake up at the same time and you would never sleep in. So for a lot of people sleeping in on the weekends, like maybe you adhere to that 10.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. on the weekdays, but then on the weekends, sleep in until 9 a.m. And that can be super disruptive. That can be extremely disruptive, right? So ideally you want to adhere to that window seven days a week and get sunlight first thing in the morning. And then you'd have a good wind down bedtime routine for your sleep. Warm shower to cool the body temperature, cool room, relaxing media, book, fiction, podcast, Technology screens off an hour before bed. Stop liquids two hours before bed. You know, do some meditation, clear your mind, get into bed and you go to sleep, right? So that's developing that routine can take some practice and some ritual. And then first thing in the morning, of course, you need sunlight in your eyes. So out in the real world, that's so critical sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning. So for the next six months from that six month to one year mark, I would recommend get the sleep dialed in, right? And then also get the physical exercise dialed in. So this could start, this could look like in the beginning, just going for a walk every day. A 30 minute walk every day is infinitely better than no movement at all. For metabolic health, for mental health, for spiritual health, it's so much better. So maybe that's starting with a walk, even four times a week, a 30 minute walk. And then maybe you up that to five, six times a week after a few weeks. And then start to do maybe one day of weight training and one day of a little bit harder aerobic exercise, sprints, running, treadmill, elliptical, swimming, whatever. And then hopefully by the end of that six month mark, you have some sort of ritual down for movement. And that could be as simple as walking four days a week, one, of, one day of hard cardio exercise or sprints another day and lifting weights another day. 
Like that might, might be enough for some of you to maintain that, that a metabolic health that you need to recover from your mental illness. For some other people might need sprints, might need hard cardio multiple days a week to bump those ketones up. I know for me, I love to do hard physical exercise, cardiovascular exercise every single day to get my ketone levels high because that, that hard cardio just naturally forces my body to produce more ketones. For many people, that's a lot to ask, especially if you're depressed, like that's super hard. So after you've done those six months of keto, then you can start to develop those movement habits as well as the sleep hygiene. And, and hopefully, this is my hope for you guys, that by the end of one year, you have developed good, consistent habits for keto diet, movement, physical exercise, and sleep hygiene. And if you can nail those three, by the end of your first year, you are already on a fantastic trajectory to heal from your mental illness. And you might already be starting to see incredible benefits in your mood, in the way you feel, etc. Phase three is from the 12 month mark to the 18 month mark, you guys. Okay. And this is an interesting phase. And what I would suggest is use this phase to begin tapering your meds. So you could potentially do that earlier. You could do that in the first year. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but if you've established good habits with your keto diet, physical exercise, and sleep hygiene, the around the 12 month mark might be a great time to start to lower medications you no longer need. So whatever that looks like, I mean, I, of course you want to do a slow taper. You want to start slowly because people can have protracted withdrawal if they go off their meds too quickly. But yeah, you would talk to your psychiatrist. You would explain to them that you're feeling a lot better. You might no longer need these meds and you would start to slowly, slowly go down, monitor your mood. You know, if you have bipolar, you would watch for hypomanias. I have a whole video about bipolar one and strategies for managing that. And if you have depression, you would obviously watch to make sure that depression doesn't come back. But this can be a great time at the one year mark when you've adjusted to doing metabolic therapies. You're used to them. You know how to do them. You know, let's try to come off those meds a bit. Maybe you don't need those meds anymore. And of course, I'm not saying you can't do that earlier. I'm, can't, I, I'm not saying you can't do that after three months, after six months. If you're doing keto, you feel amazing and you want to start to taper off those meds. You absolutely can. But for many people, this can be, a, you know, if you've been on these meds for 10, 20 years, yeah, it can be nerve wracking to, to come off them and unexpected things can happen. So that 12 month, 12 month mark can be a, a great time to come off the meds. Um, and of course, just start slowly and track your mood, watch your mood and see how things go. Okay, you guys, the final phase, phase four from the 18 month mark to the 24 month mark, the two year mark is really to expand metabolic therapies into other parts of your life. So these are the lesser of the metabolic therapies, but still so important. So if you're still having trouble, you know, quitting drugs, quitting alcohol, quitting nicotine, this could all come around the 18 month mark. For some people, they might need to do that earlier. So if, if you have a huge problem with alcohol and it's super disruptive, you might need to do your alcohol abstinence in the first phase, in the first six months. I'm not saying this isn't a flexible framework, but for a lot of people who are still having trouble, these are some other things to tinker with that might be that might not be as critical as sleep, diet, and exercise for you, but, but something to experiment. So maybe you need to quit alcohol, quitting drugs, marijuana, quitting nicotine, quitting caffeine could be another thing to experiment. I know for me, when I quit caffeine, it was incredibly beneficial. I remember drinking these big coffees and it would always make me start to feel manic. I would start to feel manic after those big coffees. So yeah, invest in relationships during this time, 18 to 24 months. Also just stress reduction, relaxation, meditation can be a great thing to, to integrate into your life at this 18 month mark. So it's just about expanding to other metabolic therapies, other things you might do. Um, I'll, I'll make a video of an exhaustive list of all of them, but the main ones to think about during this phase, the 18 to the 24 month mark are um, stress reduction, spiritual health relationships, drug, alcohol, nicotine, abstinence, get more sunlight, get outside, etc. And then of course, you guys, if at any point in this journey, you fall off your keto diet, then you'd want to return to phase one and you'd want to get that keto diet locked in again right? So 
just because you did six months of keto, it's not an excuse to go into phase two, start to do exercise and sleep hygiene, but fall off your ketogenic diet. The purpose of doing six months of keto at the beginning is to get this dialed in so it's habitual, so that you can do it without thinking and then explore the other metabolic therapies. And so so it's no excuse to stop doing your keto just because you're you're trying to do another therapy. The other thing I'll add, a final note, is the reason I put keto first is for so many people, doing a keto diet, getting the ketones up is healing enough to enable them to do the other metabolic therapies. So I'll unpack that. So for people who are clinically depressed, clinically depressed, so depressed you can't get out of bed, I understand that. I know how hard that is. Doing a ketogenic diet and learning how to get the ketones up to 2.53 millimoles consistently might give you enough energy just because your brain is healing that you can then go and do physical exercise and have the energy to do physical exercise in a way that you've never been able to. I know for a lot of people who are depressed, they've heard this over and over, you've got to do exercise, but because of the energy imbalance, because you've been feeding your brain with glucose your entire life, your brain just can't properly make you go exercise. Your brain doesn't have the right energy, so it can't make that decision. It doesn't have that motivation to get you to go exercise. So doing the keto diet for six months might give you the energy to take on some of these other metabolic therapies. And I, I do think ketogenic diet, high ketones consistently is the critical metabolic therapy. The others are super important, so don't neglect them. But the keto diet is the most important one. So that's why I put it first at the beginning, the first six months. Okay, you guys, that is my two year framework for y'all for your metabolic health journey. So just to recap, first six months keto, second six months sleep and exercise movement, third six months, what did I put third six months? Tapering medication, right? If you haven't already, fourth last six months of the two years, other metabolic therapies, relationships, spiritual health, meditation, stress reduction, drug, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, abstinence. So I really hope this helps. I really hope this gives you guys some sort of framework and path so that you can integrate these into your life and it's not confusing and you don't have to worry about doing them all at once. And doing them all at once can be hard and it's a lot and I understand that. So it can be so helpful to focus on one at a time. Of course, you can adjust this timeline to whatever works for you. If you need to spend more time, if you need to spend a full year getting your ketogenic diet dialed in, you don't feel comfortable taking on all this stuff, you can do that. Maybe it's a hybrid approach of you're getting your keto diet for a year, but you also just want to do walks. So you can walk every day and do the keto diet. So there are a lot of different ways to play with this. Um, I just hope this helps. Please subscribe to the channel. You guys like the video, share the video, comment. What videos do you want next? We just need to get this message out to everyone. And that really helps the algorithm. So people really need this message. So please subscribe and like and comment. Okay, that is all from me. I will see you guys in the next video.